Welcome to Sales Velocity TV, where we pull back the curtain on how the top businesses in the world sell more with less resistance. Bringing over 50 plus years of combined sales experience and over 100 million in revenue generated, please welcome the hosts of Sales Velocity TV and two incredibly entertaining gentlemen, Andrew Cass and Aaron Parkinson. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew, that's Aaron, and we're talking sales friction today. And uh, it's a word that we use, Aaron, a lot in the show, I realize. So it was like, hey, fitting to do an episode on the, the word sales friction because it's everywhere. It's almost like a cancer <laughs> in a lot of businesses, right? Sales friction. Uh, it's COVID. We, and we use the terminology so loosely throughout our show that now we're going to actually devote a whole show here to sales friction, what it is, number one, and how to really, you want to avoid it at all costs because... Um, it's almost like the sales prevention department, sales friction, right? It rears its ugly head quite a bit. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people, when we look at their businesses, their products, their offers, I think that most of them are really passionate about what they're bringing to the market. Yeah. And so they develop something or they're selling something for somebody else or, you know, whatever the case may be. And they're so passionate about that thing that they think that the thing should somehow just sell to every, everybody should just get it. Right. And they should just buy it. And they overlook the things that are in between your passion and the buyer actually pulling the trigger and the, spending the, some money. The fundamentals, right? It's almost yeah. like, like Aaron, it reminds me like the restaurant business psychology. If you build it, they will come. You get right. passionate. To open a restaurant, the, the 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 stigma of it, the aura of it, the cool factor. I got my own place to sign, and it's like, now that you got it, how the heck are you going to get people in the door? Sure. And right? if you look at the restaurant example, you know, so that people can wrap their heads around it, you could have the absolute best food, best chef, best ambiance, best service. Yep. But if your restaurant's in the middle of nowhere, there's no parking. Nobody answers the phone when somebody calls for a reservation. Nobody knows about it. Right? All of these things add friction to you actually getting your amazing product out to the marketplace and getting traction. Right? So it's funny because we, we show the things that we're going to talk about today to business owners all the time. And it's like we're showing them some, you know, piece of land in Nirvana. They're like, whoa. I, I never the, thought about that. I, I think the big thing though, Aaron, when we talk about sales friction, you and I have done shows on auditing your sales process. Mm -hmm. The big thing that comes to mind for me is when you're so close to the business, you don't notice a lot. So it's that's why it's always good to have outside consultants, outside coaches, outside advisors, because they can come in and objectively say, hey, I noticed these three things that are maybe deterring sales. And they go, oh my God, I'm so close to it. I never even saw it. Right. So even sometimes just listening to a show like this, listening to podcasts, studying the industry, you will grab ideas and see things in a different way than how you see them in the day to day. It's really hard to see things clearly when you get stuck in the day to day and you're running the company and running the marketing and running operations and running people. You're so close to it that you have this tiny little prism. And when you get away from it, right, I always see the businesses that struggle the most. They have no outside counseling. They have no real outside advisor. They're just on an island. And they, they, they struggle mightily because they don't take the time to get outside points of view like we're giving right now, which causes friction. And at the end of the day, if there's friction in your sales process, then there's friction in your money. <laughs> because if the sales are going to be tough to be had, then the money's going to be slow to be made. And that's not a good place to be. And that's what we're no. going to tackle here today. I think we have three, three focal points of friction. Number one is, I think we said number one is awareness right? Number two was clarity around it. And I think number three was outcome. And we'll break that down here today. I'll let you talk to that since this is kind of your formula. Yeah. And, and we're going to try and condense them into three, but there's really sort of eight that, that, that break down inside of them. And, and let's talk about awareness first, right? I saw this great, um, uh, summary of this ad the other day, you know, the company 3M, of course, yeah, Good monster longer. company, right? Monster company, but most people don't really know what 3M does. Right. And, and 3M is really like an invention company. They invent different um, tools and tapes, tools and, and materials and all these yeah. different types of things. Right. So 
how does 3M gain awareness of one of their core products? And I don't know if you've ever seen this um, ad that they ran, this ad campaign that they ran, but they basically have this, you know, plexiglass that's virtually unbreakable. Yep. So what they did is in, in Vancouver, they put this plexiglass on the side of a, you know, next to a bus stop or something, and they filled it mm -hmm. with a million dollars in cash. Really? So you could see the cash inside of this wall of plexiglass. And they said, go ahead, and if you can break it, you can have it. Challenge now, challenge advertising. Challenge advertising. Love now, it. there were some stipulations. You have to be able, you have to do it with your own body, you yeah. know, no, no ramming like a truck into it or, you know, any of it. It's just, <laughs> you know, so all day you had these people coming up and running at it and kicking it and hitting it with stuff and trying to break this thing to get this million dollars. That ad campaign made 3M a million dollars in sales in one day. That's incredible. Because there was so much awareness around this cool idea that they had had put together and and what did it cost them to do ah, they grabbed a million dollars in cash out of the the bank they threw it inside of one of their materials they built this thing and then they filmed it and they put it online right it was in, in the the other side of that Aaron, it's awareness and it's publicity right and so it's the publicity. greatest companies are are publicity stuntmen which yeah. ties to awareness can we can we do some sort of public like this a public challenge something that just gets attention keeps attention Right. That's this it's unique. And it gets I didn't even know about now. that, that, that one that they, that's pretty cool that they did that. Yeah, it is. And, and they, and go look it up online and have some fun and watch people slamming themselves into it. It's kind of fun to watch. You know, it comes to mind those infomercials, right? With, with yeah. when they bring out these crazy tools like tape, there was one that comes to mind where there was this, this duct tape they created that could stop a leak and they had like leaks on boats, leaks in cars and, yep. and they had a big guarantee, which we'll talk about, right? A big guarantee on if you buy this product and it doesn't stop every single leak. I mean, it was impossible not to buy it based on the demos and the yeah, challenges, absolutely. right? And, and let's talk about demos a little bit because I think a lot of our viewers and our listeners, they have small to medium-sized businesses, right? right? Yep. So when we look at an example of our software that sponsors the show, Pipeline Pro, right? right? We do a lot of advertising uh, digitally and one of our biggest channels is Facebook and Instagram. And so what most software companies do is they just put an ad out with their features and their benefits mm -hmm. and they say, buy my stuff. Take a trial. Right? So take a trial, free membership, whatever. And it's fine, but now you're playing the game of feature benefit comparison with everybody else. Commodity. You're a commodity, you don't really stand out, mm -hmm. right? When you look at the campaign that we have running right now, we take these shows, for example, we take clips from these shows and we put it in front of all the types of people that might use this software so that they can see that we know what we're talking about. And, and if we know what we're talking about, then there's a probably a good chance that the software that we've created is going to solve the problem Great point. for our ideal client, mm -hmm. right? We constantly show clips of demos of different parts of the software and, and we tie the demo to, to the impact that it could have on your business, whether it's saving time, whether it's um, creating more sales, whether it's better organization, all, all these. So we show all of these demos, right? Yep. We constantly run ads that show case studies of people using it, testimonials from people who've used it before. None of these have anything to do with us showing a demo uh, or, or showing an ad of features and benefits by the software. Although that the, exists too, but not solely to your point. Right. Now, do we have a whole part of that campaign that's 100% focused on here's what we do, here's the problem that we solve, here's the cost, come on in, et cetera. Of course, mm -hmm. we have that piece, but it's not the entire thing, right? The entire thing starts with awareness of who we are, what we believe in, what we do. We give a ton of value in the campaign. And when we're giving all of the value, and we hear this all the time, Andrew, because people will often come into Pipeline Pro yep. and they'll set appointments with our advisors and say, hey, can you just build all the stuff for me, right? 
how often do we hear from those people? I watched three or four of your shows and I'm blown away with how much you guys know. I would really like to leverage your expertise to have it built for me. I would we say I hear it two time. to three times a week from high yeah. paying clients. Now, if they'd come to that call cold mm -hmm. with no awareness of our beliefs, our expertise, our passion about what we do, then we've got a really friction heavy sale, right? Right. We've got to focus a lot on the, the features, the benefits, the call to action, the why we're better than our competition, blah, 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 blah. There's well, a lot it, of friction. Well, what there. you're saying is you actually have to then sell hard, hard. You have to hard sell versus right? what, what you what said, what we want to do, which is, is kind of laying the, the on ramp, right? Yeah, we, we want to reduce that friction so that when somebody gets to us, the conversation is really more around what do you have? What are our core skill sets? Are we the right fit to work together? And that's really like we're asking ourselves, do we really want to work with this person? Sure. They're asking themselves, am I the right fit for you guys? It's more of a consultative conversation versus a hard sales pitch. Yes. Agreed. And and if you can get yourself to that place in your marketing, first off, it's exponentially more fun. Yes. I, I don't, you know, I'm at that point now in my life, I'm sure like you are, Andrew, where, where when someone's like, sell me on why I should work with you, I'm like, piss off, <laughs> right? Like, I don't even care. Why, right? would, I, like, why I, would I even have to is, is what you said, Yeah, right? exactly. I don't, I don't want to play that game, right? I'm in the more connecting, um, evaluating, strategizing, you know, sure. it's a different, it's a different place to be than in the hard sale game. Yep. Right. So the more awareness you can create before the pitch, before the sale of who you are, who your company is, what you stand for, what you believe in, um, valuable tips around your industry, you, the, the problems that you can solve for people, you start to build that authority with your market before they get to you. And you got to remember in the sales process, he who has the, he or she who has the most authority sells with the least friction, right? Mm -hmm. You look at, let's look at one of our favorites, Elon Musk. They're like a year or something out on delivering their cars right now because Elon is constantly getting awareness. He's promoting the brand. He's supporting it with his moves in public. People, he's not having to hard sell Tesla. He's positioned himself as the authority in that space. And people are throwing money at him trying to get ahead of the lineup. And gladly right? waiting. Gladly waiting. He who has the most authority has the least friction in the sales process, right? Great. So that would be number one. Anything yeah. you would want to add to that? Yeah, for sure. I'm glad you, I think you did a great job of, of, of dissecting our business model, right? Sales velocity was created. I brought you the idea. I said, hey, let's do a show. Let's build sure. it off the theme of my best-selling book. And let's have the sales and marketing software that we own sort of drive the show so they feed one another. You mentioned awareness. We could use terms like publishing and being omnipresent. Right. All we're doing is publishing content. Like you, you mentioned the three areas, which is perfect, right? You got the traditional ads, you have the demos, you have case study, third-party testimonials, and then you have a show like this. And if you take all four of those together, that's a portfolio of publishing assets. They're all in their own little verticals. And what they do is they reduce friction all over the place. So when somebody comes to buy, test, try the software, you're absolutely right. They've seen multiple channels of us demonstrating, talking, sharing expertise, background, track record. And it's like, it's really, it becomes very simple to buy. And that's where we're at today is how do we make it simple to buy? So few business owners will take on the arduous task of doing all this publishing and becoming omnipresent and branding and shows and interviews. And you mentioned Elon Musk. You could mention guys like Steve Jobs of the past. You could mention guys like Trump of the past. You could mention guys like, I'm trying to think who else comes to mind. How about, how about Dave Asprey? He's a, he's Dave a, he's Asprey a, in, the, in the biohacking space. I mean, these guys, 
didn't just create products and services, they created massive visibility around themselves that made their products and services become an automatic next step. And that's the key lesson here today is I've created so much branding and awareness and publishing assets that now my products become, again, an automatic next step in the solution. That's really where we're going here today. So this first pillar of awareness is really critical because without the awareness piece, you're constantly facing friction. Like you oh, said, you constantly amount. have to sell yourself and follow up and sell. It's like you're, you're I, I was talking with a client the other day and said, this is when you don't have these things in place, you're actually starting from less than zero. You're not even at zero anymore. You're starting at less than zero. So you're, you're, you're incredibly behind the curve. When you, when you do what we're talking about here, you're actually above zero. You've actually started with a head start. So where do you want to, basically, where do you want to play the game? At zero, below zero, above zero, head start. Awareness in publishing means you have a head start. Therefore, there's less friction. We talk about less resistance, same kind of thing on this show. That's the theme of the show, how to sell more with less resistance. You absolutely do that by getting really militant with your publishing, your awareness, and your omnipresent strategy, for sure. Yeah, and I and, see- And last thing, Aaron, real quick, never- sure easier to do today than ever, by the way, with all the technology and tools. I agree. That's the interesting thing is how so few do it, but yet it's easier than ever. Absolutely. So if you're, if you're creating awareness and you're starting to transition your buyer from transactional to tribal is the term I like to use, yep. then now you've brought them into your ecosystem and your ecosystem could be your website, your funnel, your live event, your, your print media, your television, whatever, whatever type of media you're, you're, you're going to bring them into, right? The, the next step that creates a lot of friction that I see very, very often when people ask me to look at stuff and audit stuff is a lack of clarity. Then clarity kind of breaks down into a few different subcategories. So I'm going to talk first and foremost about the communication side of it. Let's talk about either the written word or the, you know, well, the written word can be translated into obviously on, you know, on paper, on a website, what you're saying in a, in a video, mm -hmm. right? It all comes from copy, right? It, it really all comes from copywriting. And what we see a lot of businesses do is they try to talk above their ideal prospect. They try to use a lot of industry specific jargon. They try to use fancy words that people don't use in their normal vocabulary. A hmm. um, lot of like bad grammar, run on sentences. There's, there's a whole bunch of elements. The easiest way to to look at this is that if I'm watching something or I'm reading something and I have to stop and go back and read it again, that's a problem. That's friction. Because one of my, what's that? It's that's friction. friction. And oftentimes I'm reading something that someone's put together and I have to stop and reread it and reread it again. And then I realize, oh, and now I understand what you were trying to say. But if I have to do it three times, that friction is a serious problem because Buyers are being distracted by a million different things at one time. You, you can't have any disruption in what you're trying to relay from a messaging standpoint. Yeah. One of my favorite quotes of all time when it comes to marketing is the confused mind says no. So if you're confused or if more importantly, if somebody else is confused by anything that you're putting in your sales process, you're in deep trouble. And I always tell my people, Go use a tool like Hemingway app, which you can find online, which will take any, any ad copy or, or sales copy that you write and it will show you what grade level it's written at and it will give you suggestions on how to make it easier to read and easier to understand. Mm -hmm. and, and what we shoot for is a grade four level. We find that if, if you can, if, if it's readable at a grade four level, that's your highest opportunity to convert. So the first part about it is, is communication. And, and then I'm going to hand it over to you for the second part when it comes to clarity, which is next steps, value, and outcome. Well, the other thing too is you get frustrated, which equals friction. 
Right. Right. If you can't understand something, you don't understand the way somebody has positioned their offer, you get frustrated. And again, we loop back to frustration equals friction, and it starts to make you not want to move forward, right? Right. That's a big problem. But it's interesting that you mentioned the wording, right? It's, it's, I I look at two things. I look at the wording, the copy, and the graphic design, right? So anytime we're, you know, we do a lot of funnel work within our company where we build sales funnels for clients, and the two big rocks that we focus on is getting the copy right first, because to your point, the wording you don't get a second chance to make a first impression with the way you word what you do, right? The way you write about what you do, the way you position your products and services or your offer. And then the second piece is, does the design look like it's 1992 GoDaddy website or does it look like it's 2022 WordPress website? That's the difference because you don't get a second chance to make a first impression with both words and imagery. It goes hand in hand. So we can talk about publishing and awareness all day long, but when they actually get to you, and they get to your offer or they get to whatever you're offering, they need to know, can you put two words together and articulate what it is that you do? And does your design look clean, professional, and elegant? And sometimes there's a disconnect there as well with the clarity. Sometimes it's one or the other. Man, they write really well, but the website and the funnel is atrocious or it's, man, they can design well, but they can't form two sentences. So there's a lot to think about. This is kind of, I guess you could say this is a little bit of a heavy episode today. Only because very few will do the awareness thing. Very few can pull off the copywriting and the design thing. And now we're at like friction compounded, <laughs> right? So, And it is friction compounded. And, and, and I will take it a step further because you did touch on a piece that I want to t- touch about in a second, which is aesthetic, right? Mm-hmm. But the, the clarity piece when someone's trying to understand what you're saying or read words in your offer, obviously the simpler, the better, but that also carries forward into what you're asking them to do. So if, if you want them to give you their name and email, if you want them to buy a product, if you want them to book a strategy session with you, whatever the outcome is that you want them to take next, it has to be crystal clear what that is and why they should do it, right? Why should they do it? And we talk about this all the time. Why should we do it now, Mm -hmm. which is a sense of urgency? Mm -hmm. Because if they don't do it now, they're probably gonna get distracted by a million other things. So is there clarity in why they should do it now? Is there clarity in what is the next step they should take? Is there clarity in what is the value or outcome they're going to get? from taking that next step, mm-hmm. right? And, and we, we see this all the time, Andrew, where somebody might create something and say, hey, I'm giving away this free report, this widget, this trial, this whatever. And they think just because it's free, somehow that should make the skies open up and everybody should you know, come on in just because it's free. Mm-hmm. There's free stuff everywhere, right? What's it gonna do for me? How's it gonna impact my life? What am I gonna get to see next? Is it super clear in the value and the outcome? Is it super clear in why I should do it now? Is there a sense of urgency as to why I should do it immediately? And maybe even is there a, is there clarity around risk reversal, Mm -hmm. right? Is there a guarantee if, if I don't like what I see or I don't like what I buy or, or, or is there, is there some type of reward I'm going to get for you wasting my time? You know, is these are the clarity items that are super important when you're developing your sales process. And that can be anywhere from a landing page where you're asking someone to, to get an email, to a cart page where you're selling something, to a sales call that you're, they're all the same thing. You're always selling somebody into the next step of your process. Yep, yep. And every one of those steps, not one step, not two steps, all steps need to have clarity. They need to have value and outcome. They need to be aesthetically pleasing, both on de- you know desktop and mobile. If you're doing digital, because a lot of people will make beautiful websites on desktop, and you know they look like crap on mobile. And 90% of people are on mobile. That's true. That's true. Right? They every time you ask somebody to give you something, do you have that value clearly outlined? Do you have that sense of urgency? Do you have that risk reversal? Is it at every time you ask them to do something? Is it present? Because if it's not 
I can guarantee you there is a considerable upside that you could be tapping into by layering in these elements. Risk reversal is key. We talk outcome in this third pillar here, right? Is how easy is it to then buy from you, right? What is that? What does that risk reversal scenario look like? For many, they're, they don't hit this hard enough, right? There's not a lot of urgency. There isn't, a, there isn't enough of a guarantee to make somebody feel, I guess, comfortable with the decision if it's a bigger decision, right? You don't see that as much today. And you actually have to do it more today. You need more urgency today than ever. And you need more guarantees today than ever. And you need more third-party validation proof than you do ever to, than you ever do today, right? That's the outcome. I agree. So if you've gotten as far as awareness and making yourself visible all over the place, if you've gotten as far as having that clarity and it, with your wording and your aesthetics, and then all of a sudden it gets time to buy, and it's like something's off, such as the guarantee or such as the deadlines or such as the urgency, then all of a sudden all that work was for nothing. So these three pillars here, these three pieces – they really have to work together synergistically. I've seen great companies do amazing with this third one, Aaron. Great guarantee, risk reversal, no downside, 90-day unconditional money-back guarantee, You know, discount before the deadline. They do all that stuff amazing, but it was just so hard to get me there because they didn't have the first two in place, right? So yeah, and, and it and really is a, 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 it has to be weaved together pretty well. Yeah, and I think the last piece, which kind of ties into all of the things we've talked about right now, is credibility, mm -hmm. right? Which I think loops back credibility, to number one, right? Credibility comes from awareness. Credibility comes from clarity. Credibility comes from guarantees and risk reversals, but it also it also comes from aesthetic, right? Mm -hmm. If it looks like crap, if if it loads too slow, I see so many clients we have where they've got a website and it takes five, six, seven seconds to load. You you look unprofessional, yeah. right? Your your website should be loading in three seconds or less, you know, to show credibility and reduce friction to your clients. And 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 the last part I would add on the credibility side is your proof, your testimonials, right? Who is who has gone through and taken your offer, bought your product, mm -hmm. you know, started with your company. Mm -hmm. and seeing the amazing result that you're promising in the offer itself, right? We are wired to believe what other people say about us 10 times more than what we say about ourselves. So that's why, for example, we, we started this, this show this morning. I said, before even people get to our <laughs> offer, I bombard them with case studies and testimonials because I want them to see other people talking about how amazing we are to build our credibility, right? And, and, and really this whole thing ties under this last banner, which is credibility. Mm -hmm. Credibility comes from awareness. Credibility comes from clarity. Credibility comes from a clear value and outcome. Credibility comes from guarantees and risk reversals. Credibility comes from testimonials and case studies. And the more credibility that you can build up before they get to the buying decision, the less friction you're going to have in the sale. Yep. Agreed. Right on. 100%. And again, this all, like you said, it loops back to number one, right? It loops back to number one and it's, you always see the companies and the brands that are breaking out. They're everywhere. You see them on TV, you see them on podcasts, you see them on YouTube, you see them on Facebook and Instagram running ads, you see them all over the place. And it just subconsciously tames down your resistance to buying their stuff. So it just, it continues to amaze me, Aaron, how few do this, how few want to publish, how few want to be out front, how few want to market, how few want to promote, how few want to want to do challenges like 3M did in your beginning example. It So few want to do that stuff. And that's actually the fun stuff. The hard stuff is the writing of the sales letters and the building of the funnels and the creating the offers and the getting on the discovery and the strategy goals. That's all the hard backend stuff. The fun stuff is what we're doing right now putting on a show every single week, syndicating it throughout all the social media properties so that by the time people even learn what it is that we do, they're like, 
well, that probably makes sense because I watch them every week, like you said. So it's we get to have fun knowing that it feeds new clients, customer acquisition, long-term clients, potentially higher ticket clients, right? It's just there's so many there's so many great tentacles to publishing and awareness that it still blows my mind how few do it. Well, I think you brought up a good point there that I did not, which is a really interesting point. When you're running a business, a lot of it is very stressful. You know, you've got staff, you've got SOPs, you've got finances, you've got product development, you've got legal. You, I mean, there's just so many things that are the have tos right. of running a successful business. Do you know what the most fun part of running a business is? It's creating. And it's probably how you got think to where most, you are as an entrepreneur is some sort of creativity that made you, that gave you a spark that you're no longer getting. Absolutely. And if you, I think a lot of business owners, they, they want to do this, that, and I'm specifically talking about the awareness piece right now. Yeah. They yeah. want to do Publishing. it. They know that they should do it. Yeah. But they often say, well, I don't have time for that right now or I have to prioritize these other items first. And if you're anything like me, who's been running businesses for 20 years, and there's always a fire. <laughs> so, And you'll find one if there isn't it, one, I promise you. 100%. All you got to do is open up email or Slack or whatever. You'll find the fire. hose. You'll find the hose, right? Yeah. There's, so you, you have to build – your schedule, you have to build your life around carving out time to do the things that are actually the most fun, yeah. the creative side. You know, I remember when you said, Hey, I want to do this show. I was like, I don't have another hour a week to, to spare, but I, I knew that I should. So I did. Right. And it's actually one of the funnest things that I do all week. You know, I look forward to Friday. Oh, it's show day. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cause it's fun. It's very fun. And and the benefits that come from it from a business standpoint are tremendous. I, I don't think there's probably any of the potential nine fires that are sitting in my inbox this morning. That you're even thinking if about I dealt right now. With, well, one, I'm not thinking about them. And two, if I solved one or all nine, I still don't think it would have as much long-term impact as sitting here doing this show with you this morning. Right. That's a really good way to look at it. Right. I think sometimes we have to reframe things differently than how we have them framed to get ourselves off the fence to do things. Right. And I, and, and, and again, we talk all the time. I think probably the path of least resistance today, Aaron, when it comes to awareness and publishing, because I think it's the most important piece of the day of the three we're talking about is a good old fashioned podcast, which we're on sure. every single podcast, but we start live and you don't have to do this. Very few shows do a live video version and then take out the audio and, and strip it out and make it a syndicated show as well. We do it because we want the visibility, literally the visibility of being on video. And then that gives us the YouTube visibility and the ability to do trailers and whatnot. But that's a big leap for most that don't have experience. We happen to have a lot of experience speaking and producing, right? But think about just taking a microphone like this, not even having a seat, be in your underwear, and you can just talk about your stuff for 30 minutes. And you can talk about concepts and philosophies for 30 minutes and just be on the audio platforms. Most people Frankly, listen to this in audio version, not video version. I hear it all Correct. the time. They got Apple devices. They have Samsung devices. So there's Google Store. There's Apple Store. There's Amazon. There's Stitcher. There's Spotify. Those are like the big five. And that's where most of this gets consumed. You need to be in people's ears because more so today than ever, people are listening to podcasts of different thought leaders and business owners and speakers, consultants who are dynamic and can share good, cool, maybe some renegade-ish philosophies. That's what gets attention. And it's the easiest thing to do. Grab a microphone and just talk. You can find the production companies to cut it up and do the intros and the outros. Most people get, they, they go right there. Oh, but the tech. Oh, but the, how would I find that cool introduction? Well, who will edit it for like, there's a gazillion vendors out there that for almost no money, very little money, will get your production to be a production and give you the visibility and the, 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 the aesthetics and the design and branding that you want it to be. Just focus on speaking and getting your voice out there and creating that awareness. It's never been easier than it is today, but yet so few do it. It's well, the missing and, and link. And I think that you're, you're, what you're talking about there is important because improper execution will beat proper procrastination. Yeah. 
yeah. seven days of the week. Of course. Right? I mean, we, we started this show this morning and we said, oh, for some reason, this tech platform isn't posting to Facebook Live today, which it might be. It might not. We'll go look at it later. But it looks like it wasn't. Right. I actually think it did. OK, great. But, cool. but we but tested it didn't it hold us the up show. is the point. It didn't hold us up. We're like, OK, cool. It's going to go in audio version only to all these other places. Who cares? Either way, we're it, capturing it. Right. Yeah. So, and, and I think that's the kind of thing that would hold people up is, oh, God, so the tech's not working or that this or that. This isn't for me. I can't do it today. I get back Just to my buyers, action. right? Just take action. Just take action. Exactly right. So to, to loop this, to close this out today, the awareness thing, the publishing thing, the omnipresent thing has to be the starting point of creating less friction. The middle piece is super important too. How clear are you in articulating what you do? And that third one was the outcome, right? How easy is it to get to the outcome? Is there enough no-brainer type elements in place like deadlines and risk reversal and guarantees and third-party proof? I mean, you could build multi-million dollar product and service offerings with these three buckets. But again, I'm going to tell you, you're going to get the most traction from getting yourself out front, public, visible, speaking, on social, on TV, in the news, in press releases, that all, every little pillar just continues to chip away at somebody not needing to think long and hard about buying your stuff. That's the reality of it all right there is that starting point. You agree? Absolutely. Well, alrighty then, man. I'm going to leave it there on friction. Um, it was a good one here today. Probably worth watching and listening to again. How do you, A, identify sales friction? How the heck do you get it? as far out of your sales process and your company as you can. It's always going to be there to a degree. The key is how little of, how, how much friction do we have? What is that percentage, right? I see businesses that are 90% friction. Then I see some that are 10% friction. Just want to get that number down uh, as low as you possibly can. All past episodes of Sales Velocity TV and radio are at salesvelocitytv.com. Check them out. I think we're 80 some odd episodes in. And we will see you on the next episode. I'm Andrew. That's Aaron. Over and out. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Sales Velocity TV is powered by Pipeline Pro, the ultimate all-in-one sales pipeline management and marketing automation platform that makes all others obsolete. And we can prove it. Take a tour at gopipelinepro.com. See you on the next episode.